Um, we have Martin Mikomaya, who is, good, who is involved in open source software uh, within HP. He is a long time uh, Debian developer. He has been the DPL, and he is going to talk about uh, Fossology. Thanks. Um, so Fosology uh, is, is a tool that can be used to analyze uh, free software and open source code. And the, the main functionality at the moment is license detection. And given that uh, Debian um, does care about licensing and we had some discussions about how to improve uh, the Debian copyright format and things like that, recently I thought it would make sense to uh, give a brief demo of that tool here. Um, so I'm, I'm just uh, going to give a brief introduction, uh, a little bit about the background of the tool, uh, why it was developed, um, what, what it does, and then the main part is going to be uh, um, just showing how it works, just a, a few things. Um, and then I'll briefly talk about the future of Fosology because it's actively being involved, and also how we can use it for Debian. So, like I said, so Fosology is actually a framework to study um, source code of, of software. Um, it, it can be used, it's very modular, it can be used to do many different things. Uh, but at the moment, the main functionality is to, to look for license information in source code. Um, so it, it goes through the source code, uh, it looks both for license texts, but also for license references. So if you say something like, this code is under the GPL, that's not a license itself, but it's, it's, it's a license reference. Um, just a little bit about the, the background of, of where I'm coming from uh, and, and why Fosology was developed. So I nowadays work for HP's open source program office and one of the main functions we have is if anyone within HP wants to put open source into a product um, that's being shipped, then they need to come to us um, and we have a formal review process to make sure that they understand licensing. For example, that they don't do things like link GPL code to proprietary software or that they don't ship GPL without the source code. Um, so we have a, a formal uh, approval process for that. And for that, we, we obviously need various tools uh, and, and one of them is, is Fosology. And so actually, I, I should say um, up front that um, I don't work directly on Fosology. Uh, I work on something else, but I, I know about Fosology and I, I thought that uh, it would be interesting to do a presentation here because I'm, I'm sure lots of people are interested. Um, but I'm, I'm not an expert, so if there is anything I can't answer, I, I can happily take those uh, questions back to my colleagues and then um, send an, an answer by email. Um, and just about the, the background of, of how companies work. So for, for me, it's, it's a really interesting experience because, um, I mean, I've been doing free software and Debian stuff for, for a long, long time. And, and for a long time, I was a student. So I was, uh, did, did a master's and then I did a PhD where I mostly did Debian stuff in, instead of doing my research. You know how that goes. Um, and, and basically, I mean, Debian cares about licensing, and there are some other projects like KDE, they really care, but there are many projects that don't care, that don't think about it, and, and basically the way I think most developers work is, well, if you're part of the, like, the bigger Linux community, you just stick the GPL on it, you know, like, like everyone else does, and, and that's it. You don't really think about it very much, and if you're from the BSD camp, well, you put the BSD on it. Um, but I think most people, they don't really care. They just do what, what sort of other people do and what they think is expected. But then I joined HP and it's interesting because as a large corporation, well, they care about licensing. Um, they, they really care about that stuff. So our, our lawyers care and, and we have to care. Um, and, and we, like, like many other companies, we ship loads of open source code. Um, so even if you don't see the, like a, a projector from HP, it may contain some open source. And so you need to think about the licensing and, and what that means. Um, and and I, I guess there, there are two steps 
for, for large companies. Uh, one of them is sort of like a procurement office, so you need to know, you need to actually know what open source is being used and is being shipped, so you need to kind of keep an inventory uh, to keep track of, of what you're actually shipping. And the other thing is you need to know well, what licensing, what licenses uh, are in that code and to make sure that you follow those licenses. So if it's GPL that you make the source code available or that you don't link to proprietary code or in, in some other cases that you give credit. Um, and so HP, uh, we want to be a good citizen. We, we care about that stuff. We want to do it right. Um, and, and so we, we, we had to develop some tools to make it easier because if you ship loads of source code uh, or software, you can't go through, through everything and, and look at it manually. Um, and, and actually, um, if you look at, at large companies or companies that use open source, for, for many of them it's quite new. Um, they, they don't really know uh, what it means. So th there are some problems we see with, with um, free software licensing. So one of them is people say, oh, it's, it's free, it's open, and that means we can just do whatever we want to do. We don't, we don't have any ob obligations. And then you say, well, that's not right. You know, if it's open source, it has a license, and uh, the GPL says that you need to do those things, and that license says you need to do those things. But some, some companies don't know that. Um, so when, when we talk to other companies, we see that, um, especially now with, with the netbooks, with companies in Taiwan, um, it's still very new for them. And, and they basically treat free software as just some third-party code, and they think, oh, we can download it, it's free, we can do whatever we want to. Um, and slowly they're understanding, well, we have obligations, we, we need to care about that thing. But that's a pretty slow process. Um, and like I said, you need to keep track of what you actually use. Um, that, that may sound easy, but if you have a, a, a large company, uh, maybe you have a central office which keeps an inventory, but if you don't, then you have different business units, uh, all of them making their own decisions, and, and all of them, they, they might know what they have shipped, but there is no one within the whole uh, corporation who, who knows uh, what's being shipped. Um, so, so in, in, in my opinion, it makes sense to have some kind of central inventory or repository. But again, that's not what, what everyone does. Um, and finally, uh, it, when you know what, what software you're shipping, you still need to know what licenses are in there. And in many cases, if you look at some, some package or some, some upstream code, it will say, well, we are um, GPL. So if you look at RPM, uh, they have a license field, and that says something like, like GPL. And then you think, oh, it's the GPL, we, we just follow the terms of the GPL. But then if you, if you actually look at it, um, there are so many uh, packages that are something like 90% GPL or 99% GPL, but in many cases you can find different licenses. Um, and that's often because, because people incorporate code from other projects which have a different license. Um, and then you can't just say, oh, it's GPL. You actually need to look at every license. Um, so it's, it's kind of um, complicated. And, and that's why you need tools. So, um, so, so HP, so that open source review board, which I mentioned. Um, so we, we look at, at, at the code. We look at licenses. We have lawyers um, who, who actually know about free software and open source licensing. Um, but, but we needed some tools. And so Fosology is based on some internal tools uh, which, which we have developed. Um, but for us, um, f we need to do that, but it's not competitive for us. So every, I mean, there are other companies and they need to do the same. Nokia, Siemens, everyone who ships free software, they need to, to review it. Um, so we said, well, why don't we make our tools available as, as free software? and share it with other companies and, and get them to, to work on it together. And that's when Fosology was born. So it's an, it's an free software open source project, um, mostly GPL v2. Um, it's, it has like public uh, website, mailing list, all, all that stuff. So how, how does Fosology work? Uh, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, you basically load code into the repository then you analyze it and the results are stored in a database 
and, and then you, you can look at the results. Um, looking at the, the components that make up Fosology, so you have the software repository, so when you upload files or an ISO image, um, then those things are, are stored not in a database but somewhere on the file system. Um, that's the software repository. Then you have the database which stores um, the results of the analysis and a couple of, of uh, various information about, about the things you have uploaded. Then you have what we call the agents, so that's like the plugins that actually do the work. So they do various analysis or various functions, so you have an agent that unpacks um, things. So you, you can just upload a depth file or you can upload a tar file, you can upload an ISO image and the unpacking agent will just take care of it, unpack everything. Um, then you have agents that actually analyze it. And like I said, it's very modular, so you, you, people can write agents um, and pe people have been thinking or planning to write different agents, for example, code reuse. Um, so you look for lines of code, whether they're being reused somewhere. And that's both interesting from a legal perspective for some companies um, to make sure that you don't put or you don't copy open source code into proprietary code. But it's also interesting for developers because if you can find code being reused, you might be ab able to function it out, in, like put it in a function and, and and don't duplicate the code. <clears throat> then there is the, the scheduler, which, which runs the whole things. Um, and finally, you have a, a essentially a web front end, but you could also access the database directly. So that's the, the sort of the introduction part, and now I'm, I'm just gonna show it because that's, that's the best thing to do. Um, so we, we have a, a repository um, which we use um, where we upload like Debian, Fedora, things like that. At the moment, this repository is not publicly available. Um, unfortunately, we wanted to do a public repository with, with like everything, Fedora, Debian, um, SUSE, but um, the, some of the, the lawyers of the, the Linux Foundation uh, we're, we're a little bit worried that if we have a public repository showing license information um, and then if you find some license problems then they were worried that Microsoft might might come and, and uh, you know with bad publicity so at the moment we, we don't have a public repository but uh, people can download for Sology um, so there is a Debian package now there are RPM packages um, you can just install it have your own repository um, so Debian, for example, we could just set up a Fosology repository if we think that um, it's useful for us. <coughs> so that's just the, the welcome screen. Um, and so, it's, so th there is some stuff in the repository, so I'm just going to browse. Um, so it's just a, a simple, uh, like a file manager. Um, so I'm going to go to Fedora because I think Debian is not quite complete at the moment. Um, so, like I said, you can just upload a whole ISO image and it will unpack everything. Or maybe I can just show that. So if you go to upload, uh, there are different ways of uploading things. So you could just upload a file from your machine or you could, um, on the server where you run for Sology, you could mount an ISO image and then upload from that, or the easiest thing you could just upload from an URL, you just put in a link and then it will download it, it will unpack it and, and do things. And a one-shot license, what that means is that you can just paste a file into it and then it will analyze that, um, but that's not what you would usually do. So if you go to browse, browse so we look at the, the ISO image, and so now it's, it's loading because um, it has uh, like um, like 1,300 uh, source RPMs in it, and I mean it's just a simple file browser really. Um, the interesting thing is, so if, if you if you go on the RPM, you can see what's in there. So you see the the upstream tar file and then the the spec file and things. Um, you can you can look at some meta information uh, about the the file. But the interesting thing is, so let, let's look at the, the tar file, and now let's, let, let's look at the, the license results. So if we click on, on license, um, you can now see the licenses that Fosology has found in that tar ball. 
Um, so it, it, it will show you the, the count, um, how often something has been referenced. Um, you can then take a look at it. You can look at the actual files and see where it has found something. And there is a description. So we, we make various differentiations um, like GPL, V2, V3, LGPL. Um, you can see GPL from the FSF. But that's something you can define. So, or you could also group those things because it's, it's all like GPL. You can just say, well, you know, I don't care about those differences. Just show GPL. Um, and as I said before, um, so for Solid it looks for, for two things. It looks for both actual license texts, but it also looks for references. So if you say like this code is under the GPL or this code is distributed or you can copy, th those are some of the words which, which we look for. And sometimes obviously you, you, you get you know, wrong results. It just, it doesn't actually refer to a license, but uh, again, it's, it's a legal thing, so the lawyers, they would rather look at more things um, than miss something important. Um, so let's just take a look at, at the GPL um, here. So you can, you can now um, see all the files where it has found this particular reference. Um, and if you, if you go to the file, it will show you the match it, it has found. So um, it, will, it will find like a 97% match. And that's it. It's all matching, so you never, um, you know, nothing. Nothing is is hundred. Uh, I mean, there, there are hundred percent matches, but in many cases, things are changed. And we will see a couple of of interesting examples, because some something which we see very often is that, um, for example, some of the BSD licenses say say something like the copyright holder, and then some people replace that with their own name. So you you get, you know, it's it's. Um, it's not a hundred percent match, but it's it's pretty close. So so we we find those two licenses in this one file, and so if we if we go on on view, it will take you to that particular um, part of the code where it has found that that license. And yeah, you can see that's the the license reference we usually put into into the code. So yeah, it's it's good it found that. So it. it the pro so it's highlighted what matches the template. So, so for Solitude has templates of the, the licenses which it knows about. Um, and it, it basically does an intelligent match against those templates. And so it highlights what matches the template. So this program, program doesn't match. But, and that's why it's, it's only 97%. And, and there because it, it doesn't match that, that comma. So if we go back and if we, if we click on ref, that's the reference. So that's the license where it actually um, tries to match against. And, and you can see, because the, the, the template we have says this file, and they set this program. Um, and here, they use a comma, and, and here it's a dash. So that's why the, the, it's, it's only 97% and not 100%. But you can see it has found the correct uh, license. Um, and here it has found another one, um, and, and that's this, this part here, which mentions as published by the Free Software Foundation, um, and that's why we call that GPL from FSF. Um, and you can see all of those files, uh, they matched the GPL. Um, it's a 96% match. Um, again, that, that's all pretty sim simple. So something we also do is we look for phrases. So that's what, what I mentioned before. We look both for license templates, um, the, the actual license texts or, or, or common things uh, you put into source code. But then we also look for some magic phrases, like code is distributed, is you can copy, things like that. And obviously, some, sometimes here you get, you get wrong results. But um, it's still just useful to look at it. Um, so, for example, this program is, is free software. Um, that, that, that's a phrase. Um, um, or here it has found backup is free um, because, again, that might be something you, 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 know, you want to, to look at. Um, I don't know what it or we'll, we'll copy a file. Um, 
So for example, that that would be a, a wrong match. So you don't care about it. It's just some match, it, some some error or message. But it says we'll copy. So maybe you know it could have been a license reference that you you can copy or you can't copy something. Um, so maybe let's just look at at a different uh, package to see. So I, I found one which, which has a, diverse, a number of different um, examples. So again, we click on license and all the analysis of, of the licenses that's done when you upload uh, the code. So it's only done once, it's then stored in the database. So when you, when you click on the license, um, you can see the result is, is pretty quick because it doesn't do it now. Um, so again, you can see some, some GPL, um, you can see MIT, with with copyright clause, maybe let's take a look at that. Um, so yeah, that seems like a, a pretty good match. Um, and then, yeah, GPL with exception clause. I mean, the, 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 that's the the thing is that there are so many variants. Um, it's not just the GPL. There are different ways of putting the GPL into code, and there are, there is the GPL v2, there is the GPL v2 or higher, there is GPL v3. Um, you can have the GPL with the <laughs> with the exception clause. There are really many things you, you need to look for, and and there are so many licenses. I mean, um, it's. So yeah, so here it has found just the, the normal GPL, but if we go down, um, it has found some, uh, hold on. No, yeah, that, that's actually a bug, which I just reported yesterday. So this one should be highlighted in, in green, because up here it has found the, the green GPL exception clause, and here this part should be, be green. So that's as a special exception, um, that's the exception clause. So that's again something you need to know. So you know it's cheap every two, but it also has the the exception. Um, um, then may maybe L GPL. No. Yeah. So he here is a, another example of the the L GPL because it it used to be. Um, the library license, but now it's the lesser GPL. So, so here uh, you can see it has found a 98% match L GPL, and if you go down, it, you will see that oh, it has found uh, because they say library, but the the template which we have is is the new one. It it says the lesser GPL, but again, that's just the template. So you you could also add a template for the the old one. Um, Maybe just look at the the phrases. I don't know. I mean that that's a good example. Was rate was later released. Uh, I mean here it it doesn't. Uh, but that that might be was released under or was released under those circumstances or something like that. Um, and here you can see. This is one example where you, you have 30% references to the GPL, um, but then you have one reference to, to this license, and, and you all have all kind of different references. And I mean, th those examples are actually pretty tame, but I found some examples where you get a, a list of like three or four screenshots full of licenses. I mean, it's, it's, it's really insane. And, and those are really tricky because you, you need to check if, they, if, they, if the licenses are compatible. Um, it, it can be kind of tricky, and, and even if you, if you see that, you still need to actually look at the code to see if it's being linked together, because um, it might be, it's just an example project under a different license, but it's not linked to anything, so that's fine, but it, it might be something else where it is linked, so you have some, w one of the examples is the, the um, setlib, um, which, which is some, um, some um, GPL incompatible license, uh, and then there is one file which is GPL, um, and and that's actually being linked to the rest of the code, um, and so someone found that and they talked to the 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 developer of that code, and the developer said, oh yeah, that that was a mistake. I'm happy to relicense it, but apparently, for, I don't know if it's fixed now, but for a long time 
the upstream code never changed the license. So if you go to some mailing list, you will find the reference where the guy says, yeah, you, you can relicense it, it's, it's fine. But if you don't know that, if you just look at the code, you will see, oh my God, it's GPL you know, linking to, to incompatible code. And, and the lawyers will get crazy about that, I mean, for, for good reasons. And so another thing which we're interested in is actually helping to clean up those problems. So if, if we find such problems, um, to, to talk to the upstream developers to, to get that changed. Um, so anyway, so that, that was the, the license browser. So just a few other things. Um, so like I said, you can upload things here. Um, then you, well maybe, so you, ca you can well, organize things, you can create directories, um, things like that. You can also define licenses. Um, so for example, there, there are what we call license terms. Um, so if, if we look at like GPL, um, let's say GPL exception clause. Um, so that's how those things are defined internally. Um, so you, you can see so that's the, the GPL exception clause. And then if you go down, um, this license is, is associated with this group. And if, if we look at that, then that's the text we saw before. So that's the, the template um, that's being used to, to look for that. But you, you could change that. You, you, you can add licenses. You, you can modify things. Um, and and this, this one is actually um, this license term thing is, is actually going to be rewritten to make it uh, easier, but it's, I mean, it, it works pretty well already, but um, maybe if, if we look at GPL, or, no. yeah, so that's more, see, well, well, let's look at GPL V2. Yeah. So what what you can see here, so if we go down, again, you have those references. So if if we look at this one, um, it's probably the whole text of, of the GPL v2, right? That's the template. But then it, it knows about those different uh, references. So because there, there are many different ways of, of referring to the GPL. So um, this is a very common thing. So you put that into, into the source code and then you have a main license file with, with the text. Um, but obviously there are many different ways of, of, you know, of referencing. Um, so all of those need to be defined. And what you can see up here um, are terms associated with, with this group. So those are the phrases you saw before. So it looks for those words. So if, 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 if it sees GPL2 uh, or GPL V2, or, you know, all of those different variants, it will flag that as, oh, we, we found something related to the GPL. Maybe it's, it's a real reference, maybe it's, it's just a phrase. Um, and uh, another thing which, which I um, which I think is, is particularly useful for, for Debian is that you can group licenses um, into different categories. Um, so for example, you have the, the, cheap, um, the Free Software Foundation, they have a list of, of approved licenses, they have a list of incompa GPL incompatible licenses, then you have Fedora, they have a list of good licenses, they have a list of, of bad licenses, and it's the same for, for Debian, so you could define a a DFSG uh, category where we would define what licenses uh, we have found to be free. And that makes it easy because then if you analyze something, um, then you can just ignore all that category which, which is free and look at all the rest. Um, that would make it very easy. So, um, so if we just look at, at those groups, um, so for example, we have in here, um, like, like I said, it's uh, the FSF group. So you have what they consider free documentation, what they con consider compatible, incompatible. Um, and then you have Fedora, you have ba bad licenses, good licenses. The, the only problem is that at the moment, neither Debian legal nor 
FTP must to really maintain an official list of what we consider free. Um, I mean, o obviously, if we look at, at the repository and see what's in there, you can find out which they found to be free. But there isn't one simple list. You could go to the wiki. Um, whereas in, in the case of Fedora, they have a wiki. It's actually, it's actually pretty good um, where they uh, define the good licenses, the bad licenses, why they don't like it. Um, things like that. So if if we just look at, at this, so you can define colors. So the good licenses are, are shown in, in green, the bad ones are flagged with red. And you can see that those licenses uh, that are in here, all of them have been found by Fedora to be okay. And if you look at the, the bad ones, um, then, well, they wouldn't accept those licenses. Um, and if you if you go if we go again to the the browse so we look at the RPM we look at the the tar file and instead of going to license or let's go to license so you can see that we saw that before but it can get pretty long I mean if if there are many different licenses it can get yeah like I said it can be pretty long um, but if you go to license groups then it's it's much easier to see what what you really care about. Uh, okay. So that worked yesterday. Let's try with this one. Yeah, I don't know why that's not working. Um, but basically, it just shows you, instead of showing each uh, license, it would just show you the license group it has found, and, and it would just group the licenses by, by those things, and you can just click on what you care about, and, and then you will see only that. Um, so it, it, it's pretty useful, I think. If, if we think about using Fosology um, for, for things like new, um, then we we could define what we what we consider as free, what we consider as, as non-free, and then you could just load the if if there is an upload in new, you could just stick that into Fosology, and then you can take a look at the results, and it, it makes it much easier. Um, so obviously, for for maintainers, it it can also help you generate the Debian copyright file. Because in, instead of having to look for everything, you, you could put it in, into Fosology. You can see, oh yeah, um, it's GPL here. We, we can, that's simple. But then you can take a look at the, the other things that may, may be, you know, maybe different licenses and things like that. So it just gives you a good overview. Um, and then you can still go to show, you can look at the individual files. I mean, you still need to do that. It, it's not magic. It's not gonna, I mean, Fosology, it's not going to just give you a Debian copyright file um, you, you can stick into your package and, and be done. I mean, that would be nice. Um, we'd like to have that, um, but that's just not reality. You always need to look at it. Um, I mean, th th there are, Fosology, like I said, is being actively developed. So we are working on improving um, both the accuracy and the speed. Um, so it's going to, to get better. I mean, it's, it's pretty good already, um, but it's definitely improving. So with the next version, we're actually going to change the whole algorithm of, of how to look for licenses. Um, and yeah. So I don't know, are, are there any questions at this point, maybe b before I um, close the, the browser? Could you give me uh, an initial copyright file that I could use? Well, yeah, so at the, at the moment it, it doesn't, but uh, there will be something, uh, I guess, that would be pretty easy to produce. 
Um, so, so like I said, all, all of the analysis is stored in the database. And at the moment, uh, the reporting that's being done is, is as you can see here, it's, it's a web interface. But uh, we, we had some conversations, uh, for example, with, uh, with Siemens. They would like to have some printed, some PDFs of, of the results. Um, so they, they're going to work on, on, on doing that. And so I, I think it would be pretty easy. I mean, you have the database, everything is stored in there. You could just connect to the database and, and get the information and, and produce something yeah. Um, yeah. that can be used. But you still need to check it. The problem that I have is we have Open64, which, is, which mm -hmm. is a C compiler from SGI. And we did a lot of work to create the package. And it, when we uploaded the package, it was rejected by the FTP master because the Debian copyright was incomplete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, so maybe I, I would just talk about the, some of the, the features that are being developed because they, they I think, also relate to what Debian might be interested in. Um, so, l like I said, the, the whole algorithms that are currently being used, uh, they're going to be replaced with, with something else, or, or at least uh, in addition to that, they're, they're going to be offered. Um, another thing, at the moment, there are those license categories and that's going to be replaced by something we call buckets, which can be used to create license categories, but it's actually much more flexible. So for example, in, in some cases, if you, if you look at the, the template, if you do the matching, it might find something like the BSD, but because of, of something, some other reason that you can define, it might actually be uh, an MIT license. And so with buckets, you, you can define those things, so it's much more flexible. Um, and another thing, and that, that it's not exactly what you ask for, but I think that's also important for us, for, for Debian. Um, at the moment, the, the way for Solitude works, it goes through the source code and it looks for licenses. But the question is, well, what about those files that don't have any license information? Um, and at the moment, we don't show that. Um, but that's something we, we really want to do because especially those files might, might be something you care about because if there is no license, well, what does that mean? Does that mean it just inherits the license from, you know, is there a main copyright license? Or does that mean maybe you can't distribute that file? And, and I think that's also something we in, Ke in Debian um, care about. And then another thing which might be useful is um, that Fosology is going to be able to look for copyright and, and author information. Because again, we, we need that because some licenses says that you need to give credit. Um, so we need to know who to give credit for. So we need to know who has actually written that code. And for Debian, because we need to put that into the Debian copyright file, again, that, that's something that would be really useful. I mean, that might make the work much easier for, for Debian people. And our question is, how do you deal, or how does these Fosology deals with uh, dual licensing? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, well, it, it just shows you, um, it just shows you both. So if, if you go, if you remember, um, I don't know if, if I have, but it would just show you both. Um, so hopefully I will, okay, yeah. Well, up here, you know, we had some examples where it says 97% uh, GPL2 and then it said 100% GPL from FSF. And in the case of two licenses, it, it would just say, well, 100% match GPL and 100% match something else. And then you, you could take a look at the file and, and you could say, I mean, I, I guess you could, maybe that's done, I don't know. You could also define phrases like dual license or, or f f you know, phrases that are being used to refer to that. And then you would also see the phrase dual license. And then when you look at it, you see, oh, there is GPL, there is another license, and there is the phrase dual license. And that sort of gives it away. You still need to actually look at, at the file. Um, but yeah, may maybe that's something that could be improved, but that's how it would be displayed at the moment. Um, yeah, and the, the, the other thing I wanted to say, 
that's not really related to phosology. That, that's a, a different approach. So phosology is the, the approach where, where we have the code. Uh, we need to know what's in there. So it, it, it does the matching and things like that. And then th there's the other approach where um, like the, the machine parsable uh, copyright file where you, you do the analysis and then you generate one file which is the authoritative file uh, you can use. And, and for us, um, so we need phosology because those authoritative files are not there. But for us, it would be great if, if instead of you know having to look through all the code, you could just take the you know like 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 RPM has a spec file or, or Debian has the you know Debian copyright. You could just take that file and you know everything. You know you know who owns the code, who has written it, what are the licenses, what are the exceptions, who do you have to credit. Um, so, but obviously doing that for you know all all the packages out there. Uh, is, is a major effort, um, but it, it's something we've been thinking about about trying to to work with some people like like, like Debian who cares about this stuff. Um, Debian, uh, the the Software Freedom Law Center, they would also be a good place because they have good recommendations about how to do licensing, and maybe we can come up with some kind of standard, and and maybe that's similar to the machine possible Debian copyright format, or maybe it needs to be extended in some way, but. But I, I just wanted to say that in addition to Debian, there are other people, um, there are companies who would definitely be interested in, in doing something like that. And, and if, if we can work on that, um, it would make life easier for everyone. Um, there is also a project in Finland called Validos. Um, it's, it's the same story. Like, like I said, every company that ships free software need to look at the licenses to know what, what they're shipping and what they have, what obligations they have. Um, and, and every company does the same work. And there are some things that are different. Um, like one company might say, well, if it's GPL, we're not going to ship it. Or another company might say, well, we ship GPL, but we don't touch GPL v3. Uh, you know, th there are different things. I mean, it's the same with Debian. We have a, a slightly different interpretation to the FSF or to Fedora. I mean, we we can't agree on that, but there are some things that every company needs to do, um, like like validate that that things are o okay. So the the Validos project in Finland is basically a couple of companies where they said, well, why don't we share our resources? We just pay the lawyer once to do that stuff um, to validate the code, and then where we differ, we we can just make that ourselves. Um, so that at the moment this is a, a project, it's member only, so you have to pay. I mean, obviously, because it's it's pretty expensive um, to do that that kind of work. But hopefully, so, some of of the things they do will be given back to the community. Um, but so uh, we're currently trying to work with them to see uh, how we can work together and and what we what we can can give back i mean we we are so hp is not involved in in validos at the moment but we are talking to them because they do something we we're interested in as well um so i've so yeah the, there are those two approaches so i think for now for Solugy would make the life easier for people um for for uh, you know packages who who need to go through through especially large packages you can at least see roughly you get an overview um and yeah maybe we we could uh export like an initial debian copyright file that then still needs to be checked and and improved um i, th I think that that should be possible um yeah but so that that's basically it from my side so i, I really just wanted to give a brief overview um that's the tool there are um, Debian packages, so you, you should be able to install it. If there is enough interest, maybe we, we could set up like for Solidity Debian Net and maybe later make it an official service. Um, it, it really depends on if people find it interesting. But the thing is that it's actively being developed. Um, we, we really care about getting other people involved. Um, so there, and and it's, it's, getting, it's going pretty well, actually. So you have some big companies like Siemens, uh, Nokia to some degree, some banks in the States, they have been looking at Phosology and, and some of them have slowly started uh, contributing code. 
um, and we we continue to to talk to to other companies and and communities. So I actually just recently found out that the the free BSD people um, they they are obviously doing something. I, I still haven't found the time to look at it in ta detail, but they they have started to use Phosology for some of their uh, license analysis for the the, the, the free BSD port, and I know that th there was one. Uh, um, and nuisance um, guy who was interested in in using Phosology to to find out uh, about licensing. So th it seems there is pretty good momentum at the moment. So so if Debian would want to, or if Debian developers want to become users of Phosology, and if there are things that are missing, I think it, it's quite likely that uh, that's something that that you know could be resolved and and being worked on. <coughs> Does Phosology look at binary files like fonts and stuff like that? Uh, at, at the moment, it, it mostly does um, source code, but that's a, a very frequent request. And, and the, the whole the algorithm, it doesn't care about whether it's te text or binary, so it, it, can, it can look at binary. You just need to actually do something useful with it. Um, so you, you could, I mean, for Sology, I've now shown, at the moment, it mostly does the license detection thing. But it's really, it's a framework to analyze um, code or like text or uh, software or whatever you want to call it. Um, so, so yeah, you, you could definitely look at binaries and, and do some interesting things. At the moment, that's not being done. Um, but there, there is some interest, um, both, so I mentioned the code reusability, uh, um, re code reuse thing, so where you copy code in, into different code, again, that would be based on source code, but it would also be interesting to do that on a binary level to see, you know, what, what's being linked or, you know, what's actually in the binary. Um, so that's somewhere on the roadmap, but probably not like the next thing. Okay, if, if there's no, nothing else, then thanks very much for your attention. And if people are, I mean, you, you can install the Debian package. It's, it's in Unstable. Um, Matt Taggart um, did it. And if, if you have any questions, there is a mailing list, or you, you can ask me, and, and I'm, I'm happy to put you in touch with, with my colleagues. They're, they're really good people and very responsive. Um, and I just don't say that because I work for HP. It's, it's, it's really a good project. Um, and, and there is momentum, so it, it's now, now is the time to do something. It's, it's kind of interesting because we've been talking to, to other companies. I mean, that, that's the fun part of, of doing these things is because we have our own policies, we have our own tools, we know how we do things, but you know, we're not perfect. There, there are other companies that do the same, and it's interesting because now we can talk to them and say, um, and we found that you know, most companies have some tools to detect licenses. I mean, all of them need something like that, but it's it's really everyone has their own solution. But by making op um, Phosology available on, uh, on the, the GPL, we hope that that people are going to standardize on that, and and that it's one tool instead of you know everyone reinventing the wheel. And and there is quite a bit of interest, um, both from companies and and projects. Okay, thanks again.